Well, you understand why I couldn't see you when you came to the hospital this morning. Oh, of course. It must have been a long night. Well, I got about an hour's sleep. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what's the prognosis on Willie? Well, I got the last bullet out of his back about 6.30 this morning. And that relieved the spinal pressure, of course, but his condition is substantially the same. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I wish I could foretell it. Listen, Dave, medical history aside, what's your opinion? Do you think he'll live? I give him about one chance in a hundred. But what will happen if he does pull through? Well, what do you mean? I mean, will he be able to talk? Well, we hope he will. But isn't there a chance of partial or total paralysis? Well, there's always a chance of that, Julia, when there's a spinal injury. Um, I, uh... I'm only asking because I hope he does survive and makes a complete confession. <laughs> then you'll realize that my long investigation here was justified. Do you mean that Willie was the one you suspected? All along. Well, what evidence did you have? Oh, it's a little long and complicated to go into now. You can read it all in the report I'm preparing. Oh, now, wait a minute, Julia. Nobody had the vaguest idea of who the kidnapper was. What in the world made you suspect Willie? Oh, I've had several long and revealing encounters with him when I first arrived here, and I, I soon recognized disturbing signs of a personality disorder. A psychopath? Yes. Yes, after that, I concentrated all my investigation on him. Well, why didn't you tell me all of this? Why all the secrecy? Well, I wanted to pursue the case as I saw fit. Well, don't you think that was a little bit dangerous? I mean, if the man was a psychopath, a, a potential killer? Oh, I knew what I was doing. Julia, if what you're telling me now is the truth, then what was the reason for all that talk you've been giving me lately about the supernatural? Oh, uh, I'm afraid I'll, I'll have to apologize to you for that, Dave. Why? Well, it was a story I just made up to satisfy your curiosity about what I was doing. Well, I must say you made a very good job of it. You started me believing that. In the interim, I, I've really begun to think that it's the truth. That there really is a supernatural? Don't be absurd. Well, how else do you account for the, the, the this little girl, Sarah, appearing and disappearing for various people? Well, I don't account for it all. She has no bearing on the case. Oh, no. She knew what was happening to Maggie before it happened. Now, how could she have gotten to know things like that? What about that other strange thing about Sarah? Nobody knows where she lives. Nobody knows where she comes from. Oh, sure, sure. David knows how to contact her, but he won't tell any of us. I don't understand why you're so interested in this little Sarah. Well, well now, come on. The case is solved. The kidnapper has been identified. What more do you want? All right, Julia, maybe you're right. I know I'm right. I suppose you'll be going back to Wincliffe soon. Oh, I thought I might stay here three or four days at least. Well, if the case is closed, there's no real need for you to stay, is there? Oh, but Dave, I'm here as an historian doing research on the Collins family. I just can't pack up and go. Listen, as long as the uh, kidnapper's been caught, I uh, don't think it would hurt if you told Mrs. Stoddard who you really are. Oh, I'd, I'd rather not do that. In a little while, I'll announce that my work is almost finished, and then I'll leave quietly. You sure you don't have some other reason for staying around here, Julia? Positive. I think you do. I think I know what the reason is. <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking oh, about. come on now, Julia. People around here aren't blind. Neither am I. You've shown an extraordinary interest in one particular person ever since you got here. Barnabas Collins. 
Well, of course I'm interested in him. He's a fascinating and charming man. And that's all there is to it? Just uh, casual interest? Really, Dave? I... <laughs> Don't get upset. I'm not trying to pry, Julia. As a matter of fact, I almost hope that Barnabas is the reason you're going to stay on a little longer. Now look, romantic interests never hurt anybody. I didn't say that he was the reason that I was staying. You didn't have to, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to. Thinking about David? Oh, you must be a mind reader. No, I was thinking about him, too. I was rather disturbed by his behavior in the study before. So was I. Why do you suppose he's so frightened about the old house? I don't know. It's never bothered him before. Do you think it could have anything at all to do with Barnabas? I don't see why he'd be frightened of Barnabas. On the contrary, he should be grateful to him. It was Barnabas who found him and brought him home. Hmm. Has, has he said anything about Barnabas since he's come home? No, he doesn't talk about much of anything. He just sits in his room. And I know that he's frightened of something, but he just won't tell me what it is. Do you think it would help if I had a little talk with him? Well, that's what Mrs. Sutter is doing right now. Why don't we wait and see what kind of progress she makes? Vicky told me you weren't able to do your lessons. I could have done it, but I just didn't feel like it. Why? Well, I don't know. David, it's obvious that you're very upset about something. It isn't going to get any better by keeping it inside. Whatever it is, you have to talk to someone about it. There's nothing to talk about. You were very frightened when you were lost in the woods, weren't you? Well, yes, kind of. Were you afraid that you might be attacked by someone? Like the man who kidnapped Maggie Evans? Well, I thought about it. Well, maybe subconsciously you're still thinking about it. Maybe. But there's no danger of being attacked anymore. The man was caught last night. The police shot him. David, what's the matter? It wasn't Willie. What? Willie didn't kidnap Maggie. And he didn't attack anyone either. David, he was caught trying to break into Maggie's room. I don't care. They shot the wrong man. Why are you saying this? I just don't think Willie could hurt anybody. I don't believe it. I don't see why you're getting so upset about it. Sarah. I've got to find Sarah. Why? She'll know whether it was Willie or not, and she'll tell me. I've got to find her right now. Maybe we're going about this whole thing in the wrong way. Mm, what do you mean? Maybe what's bothering David is something quite trivial. Well, we're just overlooking I don't it. believe it. I don't believe it. David, come back here. You can't go out. I've got to go find Sarah. I've got to ask her something. David, what is it? What's the matter? The eyes. The eyes. No! No! Leave me alone! David, please tell me what's wrong. The eyes in the painting. They were alive. I could feel them. They were blaring, blazing down at me right this minute. David, 
I've been looking everywhere for you. But now I've found you, haven't I? What were you doing in the mausoleum, David? Is there something in there that fascinates you? I think you're keeping something from me. Do you know what happens to little boys who lie to their elders? Come, David, we'll go to my house and you can tell me about your little friend, Sarah. Didn't she have a little secret she wanted to share with you? A secret in the mausoleum? Very well, we'll go to my house and see if your memory doesn't become a little clearer there. I want to go. I want to go back to Collinwood. Let me go. Let me go. I was lying. He could see I knew about the secret room in the mausoleum. Sarah said no one else knew about it except for us. But Barnabas knows. He was there. How did he find out? And why doesn't he want anyone else to know about it? What's the secret about that room? Oh, Sarah, you've got to come to me. I've got so many questions to ask you. And I'm scared, Sarah. I'm scared. Sarah! Sarah, where are you? I need you, Sarah. Where are you when I need you? David, who are you talking to? No one. But I heard you shouting. I was just playing a game. Are you all right? Yes. You look a little pale. I feel fine. Honest. Maybe you should go to bed now. No, I'd like to stay up a little later and work on my stamps. All right, but you promise me that you won't get to bed later than 9.30. You understand? All right, 9.30. I'll be down in the drawing room if you need me. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my way down to the old house. I must talk to Barnabas right away. Something's got to be done about David. His behavior's getting worse, not better. Well, what's he done now? Well, I found him standing in front of the portrait again. He seemed absolutely terrified. And he was talking to it. Well, what makes you think Barnabas will be able to help? Well, he seems to be the object of David's fear. I don't know why, but I thought Barnabas might. Well, I think he'll be just as puzzled as you and I are. You're probably right. But something has to be done with that child. He can't go on like this. He needs help. Do you think Dr. Woodard should examine him? Well, physically, he's just as healthy as he's ever been. Well, if he's not willing to talk to either of us, I don't see how we can possibly help him. There must be somebody he's willing to talk to. Well, there's Burke. He, he's always found it easier to talk to him than to us. Could you get Burke up here tonight? Well, he's gone out of town until tomorrow, but I can get him up here then. Good. Oh, Vicky. Yes, what is it? Have you and Burke set a date for your marriage yet? Well, we're waiting until Burke gets word on the house he wants to buy. Oh, lawyer should reach a decision very soon. Good. I guess we should be setting a date very soon. Vicky, I... I'd like to ask you something. Yes, what is it? If David goes on the way he is, he might find it very difficult to adjust to a new governess. I understand. If David needs me, I'm perfectly willing to move the date back a little. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Good evening, Elizabeth. Barnabas, what a coincidence. I was just on my way down to the old house to see you. Well, how interesting. I think we each want to talk about the same thing. Shall we go into the drawing room? Mrs. 
started up yet in my room. Oh, no, please, Vicky. I'd like you to join us. There's no secrecy involved here. And besides, at times as depressing as this, one can be grateful for the company of two beautiful women. apologize for what Willie did? Oh, yes, there is. After all, I took him in and tried to make him respectable. And you nearly succeeded. No, I'm afraid I failed miserably. What disturbs me most is that I gave him refuge in the Collins family name. I'll never forgive myself if what he's done should result in a scandal for the family. Has there been any further word about Willie? The last I heard, he was still in a coma. If the newspapers decide to sensationalize this I don't stuff, care about that, Barnabas, and I don't think you should either. Well, I can't help it. I think it's the greatest single shock of my life. You mustn't be so harsh on yourself. You had no way of knowing what was in Willie's mind. Well, that's very kind of you. Actually, I want to talk to you about an entirely different matter. Oh? Yes, yeah, about David. I'm extremely worried about him. Why? What's happened to him? Well, let's say something is happening to him, and none of us know what it is. I don't understand. Well, the other night when you found him outside the mausoleum, did something happen? Something that he hasn't told us about? Why, no. Of course not. I found him and brought him home. That's all there was to it. Oh, he was a little frightened, of course. His being frightened then is understandable. But he's more afraid than ever now. Is he? Yes. He's terrified, day and night. And he refuses to tell any of us why. He won't even admit that he is frightened. Well, have you any idea of what the cause of this fear in him is? Barnabas, I, I don't know how to tell you this. and I fail to see the reason why, but he seems to be afraid of you. Of me? But why? I have no idea. Who do you think I do? I thought you might. Surely, Elizabeth, you don't think I had anything to do with it? No, no, of course not. I mean, that is nothing intentional. <laughs> when, uh, what, I, I, I just don't know what you mean. Well, when you found him outside the mausoleum, did you say or do something that he might have misunderstood? Well, that's possible, of course. But I can't imagine what it could have been. Uh, probably was nothing that happened that night. I'm just guessing at possibilities because, because I don't know what else to do. You're very upset, aren't you? The only time I've ever seen David this terrified was when his mother tried to take him away from here. Well, I don't mean to minimize the situation, but it is possible that David's fear could be an imaginary one. Oh, the reason could be imaginary. But I assure you, the fear is quite real. And it gets worse every day. Well, is there anything I can do to help? I don't know what you could do. Well, since the reason for his fear seems to have something to do with me, I, perhaps I should talk to him. Well, Mrs. Stoddard and I both try to talk to him, but it doesn't seem to help. Well, I think what is required here is a good man-to-man -man talk. Do I have your permission, Elizabeth? I'm in favor of anything that will help. But if he doesn't want to talk, I would enforce the issue. Don't worry. I'll be very gentle with you. Good evening, David. Cousin Barnabas, what are you doing here? He wants to talk to you about something. What about? I'll let Cousin Barnabas tell you. Excuse me. 